What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily, and in this video, we're gonna be comparing the new LG Stylo 6 to the Samsung Galaxy A71. Now, obviously, these are two very different phones, so this comparison may not be all that fair, but there are a couple of reasons why I wanted to pit these phones up against one another. First off, in the sort of budget and mid-range space, these are two of the biggest phones you can buy right now. If you like big screens and big phones, you're probably going to consider one of these two devices. And also, the Stylo 6 is sort of a unique phone with that built-in stylus. So I wanted to touch on a couple of the features with that pen and some of the benefits you might see in having that extra little bonus, since there's really only a couple other devices that even offer it. There's a lot to talk about, of course, so I don't want to waste any more time, but if you guys are interested in doing some comparison shopping of your own, or maybe want to buy one of these devices for yourself, I will have links down below in the video description to where you can get these phones at their cheapest current prices. So be sure to check down there so you don't miss out on any good deals. First things first, let's talk about pricing and availability, since this is actually an important factor that really separates these phones. The LG Stylo 6 right now retails for around 220 bucks, but depending on which carrier you go with, you might be able to get a deal. Boost Mobile, for example, has this phone listed for 179 bucks, while T-Mobile and Metro are offering discounts from their $250 price point if you switch or sign a contract. And as far as buying it unlocked, the Stylo 6 should be around 250 bucks when it becomes available from places like Amazon. The A71 is a significantly more expensive device, but since this phone has been out for a while, you can actually get it at a bit of a discount. Right now, Amazon has the A71 listed for about 365 bucks unlocked, which is quite a bit cheaper than when this phone first launched, but obviously still way more than the Stylo 6. Either way you go, you're going to be paying $100 to $150 more for the A71, and that price difference in this case with these mid-range phones is pretty significant. Physically, while these phones are both pretty big devices in general, their designs vary drastically, and each device has a few distinct features that define it. Size-wise, the Stylo 6 is technically a 6.8-inch device, while the A71 is a 6.7-inch phone, but that measurement is strictly referencing the screen sizes. The Stylo 6 is actually quite a bit taller than the A71 by about a third of an inch, making it one of the largest and tallest smartphones on the market in general, just by sheer body size. Personally, while I did feel like the A71 was a pretty big phone, it still feels relatively manageable. It's not for everyone, of course, but the good use of space means you're dealing with mostly screen. The Stylo 6 has a thicker body and slightly larger bezels, and those factors contribute to this phone being quite a handful. It's a stretch trying to reach every corner, and I know the Stylo 6 in particular is not necessarily a device for everyone. Like I mentioned, the main reason why the Stylo 6 feels so much bigger than the A71 is simply because the body and housing aren't as slim and streamlined. You've got a larger camera notch across the top versus the smaller camera cutout on the A71, the bezels all around are noticeably thicker, and the larger bottom chin in particular really adds to the extra size. And the A71 also has a chunky, boxy body. There's no sloped edges or curves that try and hide the thickness or attempt to make this phone feel slimmer. It's a thick, chunky phone and you feel that right away. The A71, with its sort of sloping sides and slim edges, feels a little more comfortable in the hand because of that contoured body. Now, even though these are both budget phones, I think both LG and Samsung did a nice job with the materials. Each device has a plastic rear housing, but the high quality glossy finish and rainbow shine make it almost look and feel like glass, and the polished metal-like sides and edges are more design elements that just give off a premium vibe. While you obviously aren't getting flagship materials, I think both phones look and feel like high quality devices. There's just nothing cheap about them. Taking a look around at everything else, the left side of the A71 has just the SD and SIM card tray, while the Stylo 6 has its SD and SIM card tray towards the bottom, as well as a dedicated Google Assistant button and volume buttons. On the right side, the A71 has its power button and volume buttons, while the Stylo 6 has just the power button. And down below, both phones have a headphone jack, USB-C charging port, speaker, and the Stylo 6 obviously also has that built-in stylus, which I'll talk about in just a second. Around back of 
course, you can see both phones' multi-camera setups, which I'll go more in-depth with later. You'll also see that the Stylo 6 has a dedicated rear fingerprint sensor just below the camera module. The A71 also has a fingerprint reader, but its sensor is hidden underneath the display on the front. Interestingly enough, both phones do unlock at about the same speeds, though the Stylo 6's sensor is a little easier to feel for and can be more accurate at times. One other thing to note, this year LG dropped face unlock entirely on this phone, while the A71 still has its face unlock. So if you like that feature, just keep in mind that you won't be finding it on the Stylo 6. So let's now actually talk about the stylus on the Stylo 6 since it's basically the defining feature for this phone. The stylus is housed down below and when you pop it out, you'll have access to a menu of different stylus related apps and other shortcuts that pops out on the side of the screen. As far as the stylus specific apps, the Stylo 6 offers lock screen memos and a dedicated notes app. There's draw chat, a coloring book, gift capture, and a couple other useful tools and apps that make good use of the stylus. You can also just use the stylus to tap, touch, and swipe your way through the phone if you want to just use it like your finger. Obviously, Samsung has its Note device, which I think offers much more stylus-related functionality, but unfortunately, Samsung doesn't really offer a truly budget phone with a stylus. I consider the Note 10 Lite, for example, to still be rather expensive at well over 500 bucks. The A71 has its own side menu of app shortcuts you can customize and make good use of, which is nice, but interestingly enough, even though the Stylus 6's stylus is just a simple metal pointer with a rubber tip, you still can't use it on the A71. I'm not sure if that has to do with the screen protector or maybe the display itself on this phone, but I just thought that was strange. Now, I realize that the stylus on the Stylo 6 isn't exactly a groundbreaking feature, and it isn't going to be useful for everyone, but I think if you're buying the Stylo 6 in general, you're likely buying this phone because of the stylus since there are countless other smartphones on the market, including from LG, that might be better options. So that's why I feel compelled to mention it. It's not the feature for everyone, and I don't necessarily think it's a huge benefit over the A71, but for some folks, it may very well be the sole reason in choosing this phone. When it comes to the displays, we're actually dealing with two very different setups, and I think this is really the first area where paying more for the A71 truly gets you something better. The Stylo 6 with its 6.8 inch screen offers a 2460 by 1080 resolution IPS LCD panel, packing in around 395 pixels per inch. The A71, on the other hand, offers a 6.7 inch Super AMOLED screen with a 2400 by 1080 resolution and around 393 pixels per inch. The resolution and pixel density are pretty close, and I think in general both phones look equally as detailed and sharp, but there's two areas in particular where the A71 shines. The first is in color, both with accuracy and saturation. The OLED screen on the A71 offers a more rich looking experience, with I think a more true and accurate view of what's being presented. The second big thing is brightness. The A71 can get quite a bit brighter than the Stylo 6. And actually, I found the Stylo 6 to even be a bit dimmer than last year's Stylo 5 for whatever reason. I know not everyone prefers AMOLED to LCD, and that's fine, but for me personally, I almost always choose the displays on Samsung's A-series phones over most anything else. They're really that good, and especially in the budget and mid-range space, they offer some of the best displays for the price. One advantage the Stylo 6 does have over the A71 is with the out loud listening experience. The A71 offers just the one single bottom speaker, while the Stylo 6 has a dual stereo speaker setup, one down below and one additional one in the earpiece. While the A71 still sounds good, I'll always appreciate stereo sound, and this isn't something you see on too many other phones in this price range. So when it comes to the out loud listening experience, the Stylo 6 just gets louder, it sounds better, and overall has a big advantage. In regards to the internal specs, once again, this is really where you'll see how much more you're getting and going with the more expensive A71. With the battery, the Stylo 6 has a pretty respectable 4,000 milliamp capacity battery, but the a71 is a bit bigger, at 4500 milliamps. Neither phone has wireless charging, but while the Stylo 6 offers 18 watt fast charging, the A71 can utilize Samsung's super fast 25 watt charging standard. When it comes to battery and charging in general, the A71 just has the clear advantage. Inside, the LG Stylo 6 offers the MediaTek Helio P35 processor, 
paired with a GE8320 GPU, 3 gigabytes of RAM, and 64 gigabytes of built-in storage. The A71 has significantly more powerful specs, with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 730 chipset, Adreno 618 GPU, either 6 or 8 gigs of RAM depending on the model you go with, and 128 gigabytes of built-in UFS 2.1 storage. Both phones run Android 10, but obviously they have different skins from their respective companies. The A71 has Samsung's One UI 2, while the Stylo 6 has LG's own Android skin. And the UI is a bit different, obviously, with I think LG's experience being a little further from stock Android. Now, when you're just interacting with the UI and launching stock apps, the A71 is of course going to feel a bit quicker and launch and load apps faster. That's no surprise, and I think the A71 overall is one of the best bang for your buck smartphones you can buy when it comes to the specs. It's really a solid setup. The Stylo 6 might be a bit underpowered by 2020 standards, though to be honest, it is still a decent experience, at least with most stock and simple third-party apps. The big advantage though comes when you launch and load more graphics-heavy games. I think the A71 is a really solid gaming device, while the Stylo 6 has really two issues in particular, launching the apps and attempting to close out of the apps when you're done playing. It takes the Stylo 6 significantly more time just to load up any given game, sometimes a minute or more when compared to the A71, which is really frustrating. Call of Duty Mobile, for example, in this test really got hung up on the Stylo 6 while the A71 was ready to play in a rather respectable time. And it was a similar story launching PUBG. The Stylo 6 just takes so much more time getting to the main screen, and that less than ideal processor paired with just 3GB of RAM I think is really what holds this phone back. Now fortunately, when you finally do get in a game, I do think the Stylo 6 performs fairly well. There's a bit of frame dropping from time to time, and a tiny bit of lag every once in a while, but in general, the Stylo 6 can play games comfortably, though I think I'd still prefer to have the A71 in general simply because it's a totally consistent experience, and it is probably one of the best gaming devices you can buy under 400 bucks. The bottom line though is this, if you're just going to use the phone for simple stuff, like social media, web browsing, YouTube videos, things like that, the Stylo 6 is probably fine, and even playing games, it's decent too, but for speed, and performance, and also for longevity, the A71 is just a far better investment, there's no comparison. When it comes to the camera setups, both LG and Samsung have made some big improvements to their budget lines by adding more lenses, more features, and more capabilities. Though once again, I think the A71 is going to have the clear advantage. Around back, the Stylo 6 packs a 13 megapixel main lens, a 5 megapixel ultra wide shooter, and a 5 megapixel depth sensor for portrait shots. The A71, on the other hand, has a really impressive 64 megapixel main lens, 12 megapixel ultra ultra wide lens, 5 megapixel depth sensor, and an additional 5 megapixel macro lens for super close up photography. In general, the A71 is going to be the better picture taker based solely on the specs, but it goes beyond just that. The A71 has significantly more shooting modes, features, and capabilities, and that partly has to do with the camera specs, and partly has to do with the better internal processing power. You can shoot 4K video both with the rear lens and the selfie camera on the A71. Well, you can't do that with either on the Stylo 6. The A71 also has night mode, which is very useful. There's a couple slow motion modes and an additional macro lens like I mentioned. Overall, the A71 I would argue is probably closer to even a flagship camera setup than a budget one, while the Stylo 6, even though it is certainly much improved over the Stylo 5, is still a 2020 budget smartphone camera. With the selfie cameras, things are a little bit closer. The Stylo 6 packs a 13 megapixel lens, while the A71 has a 32 megapixel shooter, and while the A71 might seem like it could have more potential, the results are actually pretty similar. Both phones offer a comparable amount of detail, they aren't the best selfies in the world, but they're pretty good. And when we move over to a portrait shot, I do think once again both phones did a decent job with skin tone, detail, and separating the foreground and background, though you can tell that it's not exactly perfect. My biggest takeaway here though is that while Samsung's selfie pictures are much improved, the Stylo 6 is a massive upgrade over last year, and something I was pleasantly surprised with. Though I don't 
don't think either phone competes with any higher end device when it comes to selfies. All in all, it's no secret that the a71 is the better device, pretty much from start to finish. But really, I think there's two things worth considering. The price of the a71 is pretty significant. We're talking about more than a $350 device versus the Stylo 6, which could be bought for $250 or even cheaper, maybe even under $200. That, I think, is a bargain for this phone, honestly, and it makes it a good purchase. In addition to that, this is one of really only three or four phones that has the built-in stylus, and for most people seriously considering this phone, that's likely the deciding factor. I'd personally rather have the a71 for its performance and specs, as well as its potential longevity, but I suspect that a lot of people will be getting the Stylo 6 this year, and I still consider it to be a solid phone. So there you go, that's everything you need to know about the LG Stylo 6 and the Samsung Galaxy A71. Which phone do you guys prefer, the Stylo 6 or the A71? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below, of course, but hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.